All right, ladies and gentlemen, the PlayStation 5 Pro, is it still happening? Tom Henderson from Insider Gaming writes this particular article, and I think it's very interesting because one thing that is probably in a lot of people's minds right now with the gaming landscape changing, with Xbox pretty much being super competitive in the hardware space by actually not selling much hardware, but instead transforming the understanding of a video game platform in the face of everybody else, it's interesting to see if PlayStation is going to make this bold move of bringing some kind of a, in quote, console refresh, or in this instance, maybe it could be something that will pay off or something that they maybe at the end of the day decide that they're going to actually maybe strategize differently. Because if you're not going to look at all of them from that perspective, even though PlayStation may be selling uh, or may have sold more consoles than Xbox itself, the reality still stems that with all this in perspective, Xbox is at this point changing the entire game. And this is something that I've said before. They looked around and they saw, man, there's no way we could win this. So let's change this because that's how business usually goes. The market leader, which I think is Xbox from an innovation perspective, usually makes moves that are bold. And in many cases, they're misunderstood for like five years before people finally get a sense of, oh, this is what's going on. Exclusive says that's well, this is the exclusive report is the PlayStation 5 Pro releasing in 2024. The latter half of 2024 is here and questions have begun to emerge a lot more frequently about the PS5 Pro's future. Is this still happening? Will the PS5 Pro be released in 2024? When will the console be revealed? ETC. Admittingly, the more recent discussion about the PS5 Pro's promising, uh, sorry, Pro missing its holiday 24 release has been fueled by my own tweet. What is your own tweet? These reporters, man, y'all need to learn how to not always reference. <laughs> oh, if it releases this year. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Apparently, this is a tongue-in-cheek. Okay. People understandably took a relatively passive comment as if I was implying the Pro would miss its Holiday 24 release or be canceled entirely, but that isn't the case as of the time of writing. Developers can submit their applications supporting the PS5 Pro to cert ops, that's the, pl the platform operations, on July 30th, the date understood to have been finalized as far back as 18 months ago. In addition, all applications for the PS5 uh, you know, on games that will be released after September 15 will be required to support the PS5 Pro. This does not mean the PS5 Pro will release on September 16th. So it although uh, not so although not an exact release date, the information which uh, was released by PlayStation uh, earlier this week to developers suggests that PlayStation 5 Pro is still on track to be revealed this year. Now, that is the short and a suite of things. This console is still coming, but the price point and what Xbox has done, how is that going to affect the entirety of, say, consumer perception? This is something that a lot of people are not really talking about, because if you have a PS5, the very first question that you need to ask yourself is, what reason do I actually have to go in and buy myself anything else that is, you know, uh, another PlayStation product, when in reality for this generation, I'm not necessarily in position to say much has been granted to me as a PlayStation 5 user. Think about it. I mean, think about it. How many games in terms of PlayStation exclusives have been released on the PlayStation 5 console that has come from Sony themselves that are not money hatted games or games that really do carry that PlayStation uh, insignia on them? When, when I say PlayStation insignia, I'm talking about their, you know, legacy titles. You're looking at, you know, God of War Ragnarok that came out on PS4. Horizon Forbidden West that came out on a PS4. Uh, you know, Stellar Blade is not a PlayStation Insignia game for most people. For me, it's not. Uh, one reason I'll keep my, you know, my PlayStation is maybe if, say, games like Uncharted was coming out and it was well written and it was well done and it wasn't like crappy or whatever it is, I'd be looking forward to buy a game like that. But, you know, The Last of Us Part 2, I never got around playing. I was playing The Division and many of you told me not to bother playing. I remember I saw comments on this channel years ago when I said, hey, man, uh, this game is on sale, The Last of Us Part 2. What do you guys think? And people are like, don't even bother touching it for free. So there are all of these different concerns that, in my opinion, seem to right now be another force pushing at the competitive side, you know, side in terms of what PlayStation is trying to bring to the table. And if this PS5 Pro launches, people are going to look at this and say, why buy a Pro when I can spend 80 bucks and buy myself a basically minimal Xbox setup with a fire stick and a controller? Mm, in terms of the bundle that just came out. Remember, there was the $80, bun $80 bundle that Amazon and, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft were basically putting in, 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 you know, putting together. 
So there's just so much that you have to pretty much pay attention to in this particular conversation. And to be very honest, I'm interested in seeing how this all plays out. Because at the end of the day, remember, the consumer wins. Always remember that, ladies and gentlemen, you win. Because when the competition basically between these two elephants are, you know, raging on the ground, they're stomping upon the prices and the prices continue to go down. The market factors continue to benefit you. And this is exactly what you should be looking forward to. Thanks so much for watching the video. Appreciate you guys' time and audience. And hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.